Tom, always appreciate the time. Thanks for it. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well, Zach. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing fantastic. So we knew that the Braves had this great regular season. The expectation was to get back to the World Series and win it. They've met their kryptonite once again in the Philadelphia Phillies, and they go down in four games. Just how did you react to that one last night? Well, I mean, listen, I'm uh, I'm surprised as anybody, right? I mean, um, you know, you look at the season the Braves had, and, you know, like I said to people all the time, you know, I know postseason obviously is tough and, and, you know, not necessarily always the best team that wins in a short series, right? If the team gets hot, um, then, you know, then the other team's in trouble. But um, having said all that, I, I always ended it with, I'm not going to bet against the Braves. Uh, you know, they just had too good a team, too deep a team, um, you know, and, and I think they were the odds on favorite, unfortunately, um, to your point, you know, the Phillies had a, a little bit better series, um, you know, their superstars rose to the occasion and, and, um, you know, really made the difference, uh, in that series. So, um, you know, uh, it was a tough ending to a great season for the Braves and, uh, you know, it, it's something that, um, they're, you know, unfortunately, and. And I've experienced it enough in my lifetime, too. They're going to have to, you know, live with that, deal with that over the course of the winter and and find a way to put it behind them and be ready to go next year. You live in it both ways, winning a World Series, and we know the Braves have won a World Series, and then people expecting more. Just what advice would you give to this Braves team moving forward so they go get another championship? You know, that's just the thing. you got to keep giving yourself chances. Um, you know, listen, it was – uh, frustrating for for the teams that I was a part of in the early 90s when you know we lost in 91 we lost in 92 we lost in 93 um you know but you keep giving yourself chances and and you know to me that's the thing right as a player you want to have a chance every year and and you hope it goes well or hope it goes right um for you at least one time which you know again in my case it did but um, you know, yeah, you got to keep giving yourself the opportunity. The only way you're going to do that is to approach each and every year as, as, as its own thing, right? You, you show up for spring training a year after you've lost, uh, you know, a bitter playoff series, whether it be in the first round like this or in a world series, uh, to me, it doesn't matter. You lost when you show up, you got to find a way to put that behind you. There's nothing you can do about what happened last year. You can learn from it, but you can't do anything to change it. Uh, so all you can do is take what you learn, try to apply it to the next season and then go out there and, and bust your butt and try to give yourself another opportunity come October of, of that season and, and roll the dice again. See what happens. Tom Glavin here with us. The Orlando Arcia situation is fascinating to me because he said, "At a boy, the Phillies use that as motivation. And then I thought that the Braves really let that get to them and become a bigger deal than what it actually was. And last night, He's going at it with Phillies fans. Were you disappointed in the way that Orlando handled that entire thing? I mean, look, I think, you you know, I, I wasn't really sure exactly what happened. I had just heard that he said something. And, you know, my initial reaction is, you know, why? Why do you allow that to happen, right? Why do you say something um, that the other team or the other player, whoever it's directed toward, can potentially use for motivation? You don't, you don't need that, right? Um, no, I think the circumstances were a little bit different than I thought. Um, my understanding was something that was said in the clubhouse, um, you know, and, and I think in the clubhouse, you, you know, you always want that to be your sanctuary a little bit, but Hey, you know, at the same time, if the clubhouse is open and reporters are in there, who knows, right? That's why you got to be careful about what you say. And, and particularly in the postseason, you know, I mean, I know that's something that, so many of those teams I was a part of that, you know, Bobby was the manager, you know, we worked really hard at trying to stay away from those opportunities. I'm not saying that we were 100% successful, but, you know, our mantra was always keep your mouth shut, keep your head down, go into town, win your series and get out and, and don't give that team on the other side, you know, any more reason to want to beat you than they already have. And, and, you know, like who knows how much motivation that play, I don't know how much, I don't know how much motivation Bryce Harper needs to have a big series yeah. against the Atlanta Braves, right? <laughs> Particularly in the postseason. But, you know, I think it's probably fair to say it didn't hurt matters for him. Any. It was just so bizarre to me last night, though. You're in an elimination game, and he's turning around and getting into it with the fans, and Acuna almost, like, he did grab him in that video. He's like, well, what are you doing pretty much? It was weird that the focus, I don't want to say wasn't on the game, but he was even, like, responding to the Phillies fans. Well, I mean, to your point, if he's if he's even engaging with them for a second, then his focus is taken away from what he should be doing, right? And and I think that's, you know, that's the run, the risky run when you have those kinds of situations. I think that's the that's, 
you know, it's like, I, obviously done so many interviews now here in the postseason and, and talking about different things. And, you know, the, the, one of the things that inevitably comes up when team people start talking about the postseason and trying to break things down is, you know, would you rather have talent or experience? Right. And, and look, I'd love to have a combination of both, but I think I'm going to, I'm going to err on the side of experience just because of stuff like that, right? Things like that. When you've been experienced in the postseason, you know how to deal with that stuff. I know for me personally, my first postseason, it wasn't so much the games that was hard to deal with. It was everything else. It was all the, the you know, you're flying your family in and out of cities. You're getting hotel rooms. You're getting tickets. Uh, there's way more media than you're used to being around. You're having to deal with that. And all the while you have, you're trying to prepare and play games. And I would, I would say that the, the biggest thing in, in terms of having that playoff experience is, tr is learning how to deal with all the noise and the distraction that goes around the game. And when you learn how to deal with all that stuff, it makes it a lot easier to have your focus on the baseball game and just annoy all that other noise. I mean, ignore all that other noise. Tom Glavin here with us. So you see the Orioles go down, the Braves go down, the Dodgers go down. I know that the Astros are still alive, and every year they're in the ALCS, it, it feels like. A lot of people are now saying maybe this format change isn't a good one, and you win all these regular season games, you have a lot of these teams go home. Personally, I would say just do what the Astros do. Do you have a problem with the format, and you think they need to tinker with it? I mean, what I, I don't know. What do you tinker, right? Hey, um, you guys won your division, and you lost because yeah. you had off days. We're going to fix that. All right, how do you fix that? What do you do? Like, what do, you do right? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I, again, I know – I go back to some of my days of playing, right? And and you know we didn't have this off time, right? It it you know like my first few years of, of playing in the postseason, it was the LCS, and and that was it. So you know you had a couple of days off at the end of the season, and you were right back in the soup again. There's something to be said for that. There's no doubt about that. But it, and and I think every every manager who is in a situation where they're trying to maneuver through off days will tell you that's the biggest challenge is keeping guys ready. Uh, keeping guys, you know, kind of geared up and, and having that intensity that you had uh, to win your division in the first place. But um, I still say that the format favors the teams that win their division. You know, you have home field advantage. Uh, you have off time. You have time to get your guys healthy. You have time to get your rotation set. Um, but having said that, too, I don't think that not having those off days is clearly the – um, the downside to those teams that have had to experience that either, right? I mean, uh, to me, I think the format the, the the format is fine. If there was one thing I would look at doing is I would look at reseeding the teams after round one, you know. And and again, in this case, to me, and, and I'm not saying it doesn't matter. You got to beat everybody, but to some extent, it matters a little bit, right? Okay, so the Phillies win the, and Arizona wins. Well, if the Braves have the best record in baseball, they should be playing the lower of those two seeds. Yeah, right? so makes to sense. Me, I think like football. That's, yeah, to me, that's something I think baseball needs to look into. Um, but as far as the off days go, listen, uh, I, I would I would much rather be a team that wins my division, has off days, and can get everybody healthy and get everything set and take my chances with that versus having to win an extra series. Talking to Tom Glavin, do you feel as if we're on a collision course with these final four teams of Phillies and Astros once again for the second year in a row in the World Series? I mean, you know, who knows? It's hard. Look, um, I, I don't, I don't know how you can discount anybody at this stage of the game, right? I mean, the Phillies, I think, obviously are, are a team that um, maybe has, um, you know, a little bit, or at least on the side of the most star power. Um, you know, Houston certainly has their share of star power. You know, the Rangers and, and Arizona are two really good teams that most people don't know anything about. Uh, and, I, you know, as much as it's a surprise to most people that, you know, don't follow either of those teams that they're where they are, it's probably not a surprise to their fan base. You know, I think you, you look at the Rangers. The Rangers did – had an, an unbelievable offensive year. The only thing that overshadowed it was the Braves' offensive year. Yeah. Uh, so they're a really good offensive ball club, and they they're pitching – kind of comes together you know i know they got some guys banged up but uh their pitching has been good enough to give them a chance and i think arizona you know arizona is a team that was pretty streaky during the course of the year but when they were on the good side i don't think there was anybody that really was excited about playing them and and they're a team right now that clearly is on the good side but again they're a really good club a really good offensive club and and, and pitching club that most people myself included can't tell you a whole lot about them
Yeah, and, and I look at the Phillies. They just have such great chemistry right now. And, you know, they are chasing to get back to that World Series and correct the wrong from last year. But then you look at that Arizona team, you're right. They had a strong start, and then they were kind of forgotten about. And they, they have a, a good mix of, of youngsters and veterans, and no one's expecting anything out of them. I think that makes them e- ease up a little bit. And, and I think this could be a fascinating NLCS because all the pressure is now on Philadelphia to get this thing done. No, I, I agree. And, and again, it, it's really hard to factor in um, what the expectations of winning does to teams, does to players, right? Um, you know, the Braves, again, clearly the team that had the bullseye on the back, right? Everybody expected the Braves to win. And there's a there's a ton of pressure that goes along with those expectations. And conversely, you know, when you're a team that nobody really says much about or doesn't give you much of a chance, yeah, you kind of go out there with that carefree attitude, like, you know, truly, like, what do we have to lose? Yeah. Nobody expected us to be there, right? So, um, you know, I think there is some benefit in that, uh, of, of being that team that kind of nobody's really paying attention to. Now, I'm not saying for a second that Philadelphia is not paying attention to Arizona. Of course they are. You get to this stage of the game, anybody can beat anybody. Uh, but to your point, I think Philadelphia – is the clear favorite in that series. And, and you just don't know how teams going to uh, guys, mostly individually, how guys are going to react to being a favorite. Last thing I'll ask you has nothing to do with the playoffs, but for Otani with his future, if you had to take a guess right now, where do you feel like he'll be playing next year? You know, I think it's a really hard call right now. I think those waters have been muddied really badly now with his injury. Right. Like, I don't, I don't, um, I don't know. I mean, it's the kind of thing is, is, is he going to be able to come back and, and hit and not pitch or is he going to have to take the whole year off? I mean, uh, I don't know enough about it, but I mean, look at, I think obviously, obviously the bigger market teams are always going to be in the mix. Um, but I think that, uh, it, it's going to be an interesting thing, you know, I mean, surely from the pitching side, we've seen a lot of guys in the last couple of years that have been traded or signed coming off of Tommy John. So I don't think teams are, uh, overly concerned about the Tommy John aspect of it. But um, I think for me, the more intriguing side is, you know, is he even going to be able to play next year? And and if he's not, how does that factor into a team signing him knowing they're getting nothing for a year? Now, I know he's not a pitcher, but you saw Harper had the Tommy John and look, he goes to first base. They eventually, and they used him in that DH role. The thing I wonder, because, you know, if he could hit next year and then when he wants to return to pitching a year from now, do they maybe say to him, let's use you in a closer role or put you in a relief role instead of being a starter. I wonder if they make that change with him. I mean, that's possible. Listen, I think it, it's going to be hard. Listen, and, and I know people don't like hearing this because, it, you know, he is such a, a an unicorn. exciting player yeah. to watch on both sides of the ball. There's going to come a time where he's going to have to make a choice, I think. You know, it's just it's just too demanding to do what he's doing. Now, is, is it the kind of thing where it, it alleviates some of that stress on him to be a closer? I don't know, maybe, but, you know, it, it may be the volume, right? But if you're out there DHing every night and it's weighing on the back of your mind that at some point in time you're going to have to come in that game as a closer, you know, mentally, that's a lot for 162 games a year. So who knows? But, um, you know, I just I just can't see him being able to continue doing what he's doing uh, for the foreseeable future. I think he can do it for a little while, but I think there's going to come a time where uh, just physically it's going to get tougher and tougher to to do both of those things. By the way, you think the Dodgers send the Braves like a gift basket? Because no one's talking about the Dodgers losing after what happened with Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they, I'm sure they are in, in L.A., obviously. But, no, I mean, look at I think both of those teams, um, you know, there's some some questions they have to answer, right? I mean, look, they're both super, super good teams. Yeah. Um, but, you know, kind of fell to the same fate. They took the same time off and they weren't the same team coming back uh, that they were after that time off. And, you know, again, that's, it's always a concern. Uh, And clearly, um, you know, there's still some more questions that out there as to, you know, if you're the team that wins your division in this format, how do you, how do you keep your guys sharp? 